Let us pretend you have two distributions, one in column A and one in column B. They do not correlate well together. Their correlation is very low, as you can see here. So what are you going to do if you want a correlation coefficient of 0.9, for instance? I, I use formulas in here, but you can also use hard-coded values. I'm, I'm just using formulas so I can update it. I put in here, with the help of the round function, a norm inverse function based on a random number between 0 and 1 with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 2, and I rounded it up to two decimals, and I did the same there. But again, they can be really hard-coded values. So how can you make this one better correlating? At this point it's low, as I said before, and I calculated that with the coral function. So between x and z there is a low correlation. In order to make a better correlated one, we are going to use this formula equation. I did that already, and I try to hide that column. So we have in here that function, I used round again. So it is the coefficient times the x value in A2 plus the square root of 1 minus the correlation coefficient to the power of 2 times the value in column B. Once you do that, you will see that the correlation coefficient comes very close to 0.9, so you don't really need column B anymore. I could hide it. I'm going to hide it for now. These are the two well-correlated ones. If I press F9, because I have formulas in here, it will update. And you will see it comes very close to 0.9 all the time. If I would make this 0.7, for instance, it will redo things and it will come much closer to 0.7. So I have two distributions that are pretty well correlated. If you have more than two, multiple correlations, that is, you have to do much more work. Let me show you what it entails. Le let's pretend you have three distributions. It can be five, ten, whatever you want. And I put in there again norm inverse, norm inverse, norm inverse to make it updatable, but they could be hard-coded values. And we are aiming for the following correlations. I X to x should be 1, of course, x to y, let's say 0 0.6, 0 0.3. Realize that this should always be 1, so make sure that your matrix is correct. In order to work with that matrix, we have to do what they call a Kolensky decomposition. Unfortunately, that is much more involved than you think, so we need a VBA code to do that work. So we go to Visual Basic, Alt F11, and there we have the function Kolensky that we created ourselves on a new module. It has an argument that is of the range type, so I can highlight later on the range when I use that function. And I have to acknowledge that I partially borrowed this code from Kurt Verstegen. These are the variables we have. Here there are two that are of the array type open close parenthesis, open close parenthesis. Then we calculate how many columns do we have in the matrix. We redim the two arrays, two-dimensionally, from 1 to n for the rows, from 1 to n to the columns, etc. Then we are going to loop through 1 to n, and again from 1 to n, and we put in array matrix i, j, i, j, the value of O matrix, that is the one that we had done here. So we finally end up with this. Then we are going to make two other loops, one nested in the other for again 1 to n for i, 1 to n for j. We take from the array matrix i, j the value. 
Then we loop with a third loop. k equals 1 to i minus 1. Then we do, if i is j, then we take the square root of the p-value and store it in the array array lower. Else if i is less than j, and it's going to be the p-value divided by the array lower, etc. So we have three loops, basically. And then finally, we transpose that array lower, and we return that through the function Kolansky. So now we can use that function Kolansky later on, and it does internally all this work. So we are going back to Excel. And we used that function here. But make sure that you highlight the entire range, because this is going to be an array result. And we put in there equals Kolansky, that is now an official function, user made, f3 through h5, that is this range, Those were the that's the original matrix, and we do that at once, and we accept it with control shift enter So, the Kolensky function, based on the matrix of correlations, and then we decompose it. If you ever forget to do control shift enter and just do control enter, you get nonsense. Then just make sure you select the entire range, click in the formula bar and correct your mistake, and this is the decomposed matrix. N now we are going to use that matrix here in this range. We do that with another array function, but this time one that Excel provides. It is the M multiply one combined with transpose, and we do that again for the entire range. So you have to accept this again with Control Shift Enter. I'm going to repeat that. Control Shift Enter. And these are the values that are correlated according to this matrix. How do we know that it really happened? I calculated here the correlations for the original distribution to the left. And I did that also for XC and for YZ. The rest I didn't do it. You can do it, but then you should get the result 1. And you don't have to do those, of course. So this shows you that there is not much correlation there. But at the moment you are going to do it with your new matrix, we get much better results. This is 0.64 and we had asked for 0.6, that one is 0.22, we had asked for 0.3, and this one is 0.64 and it was close to 0.5 that we had asked for. Needless to say, because I have put here norm inverse functions, if I press F9, it will update and you will see that the bottom or the table to the right, comes very close to what we had asked for. Not perfectly, of course, because we are only dealing with 30 values in each distribution. The more values you have, the closer you will come to the correlations you had asked for.